Hi, Daddy. Stop off the floor. No, I didn't. Just stop off the floor. Hi, how you doing? My name's Sharon. I work on the computer. Hi, Daddy. Stop off the floor. He's like Bugs Bunny, doesn't he? Oh, he's always laughing. See, I always wanted Jared to be a receiver or a quarterback. I you wanted me to be a quarterback. Or a, or a quarterback. You, I want you and Julian to be quarterbacks. I didn't want you pigeonholed either. That was the other thing. I didn't want you. They, were, they wanted you to be the big man exclusive. Mm -hmm. And I didn't want you to do that because that's what they did to me. Well, I got that all the time. You know, you're the physical specimen. You don't know anything. You're dumb. You know, you just you just want to play football, basketball, but you don't know a damn thing. And I understand people now, they don't know what to say to you. Mm -hmm. So they'll say, wow, you must be a bodyguard. It's insulting to me. But I understand, I understand why people say that. They don't mean to insult me. They, they see a big guy and they acknowledge it, but they, they don't know what to say. In your sport, you were dominant. You, you were just specimen. Green. Rick. Boy, he yeah. has been a load today, hasn't he? He's been all over the place. He is just dominating that offensive line. When you got angry, you played harder. I would say aggression and anger is especially exists on my on on the Audric side, my father's side. So, with what CTE is supposed to be, mm -hmm. are you worried about it for me? Of course, I'm always worried about it for you. Why? But I worry about if if it's true. When it, when it relates to, to about anger and aggression, I said, well, he was always, he was always expressing that when he was a kid. Get the video off me. Hey, come here. Don't tell me what to do, boy. Yeah, stop. Yeah, get off my video. What's wrong with this boy? It's not first to go. I always talk about the long rides in between Lebanon and Philadelphia. I remember getting so upset with you because I'd say something and then you'd say, why? I'm like, what do you mean, why? I would get angry and angry and angry. Yes, you would. Until I would spit something out. I would, I would, I would ask, why do you feel that way? I said, well, why did you say that? And you're like, because that's the way it is. I'm like, why is it that way? I want you to have thought. I want you to be able to express yourself. And I want you to be able to articulate what it is that you believe. You know, I didn't, you weren't a robot. And I, and I didn't like being made to be a robot. I didn't want people to automatically assume things about me. And, and if I want to speak to it, I want to be able to speak to it. And I wanted my, my sons to be able to do that, too. I want to get out of All here. All right, man. Have Julie. fun. How are you feeling? I'm feeling I'm fine, man. Yeah. We're getting better. Yeah. We're getting better. We got my balance. Yeah. It's getting coming back. What's that? Well, as you're holding the, the branch. Oh, well, I'm, I'm a lot, believe me, I'm a lot better. All right, good. We should get rolling, guys. Well, there will be a lot of people watching the NFL draft this Thursday night. They'll be watching as former Lebanon High and Penn State star Jared Odrick's name is called. Lebanon High's Jared Odrick starred for Penn State. Now he's about to take the next step, getting drafted by an NFL team. And his hometown couldn't be prouder. I remember, like, calling and we were late to get on the team, but then like I visited and they saw how big I was and so they let me on the team. That you know, I didn't have to go through the same Tryout. tryouts and time periods. What other purposes do you think that you felt at the time sports served? Uh, male role models, um, discipline, just hard work. I never felt that it was a babysitter. I mean, unfortunately, um, there came a time when um, I felt that my way of parenting you just wasn't working, so I felt a little frustrated. A lot of times you were trying to be defiant on, on purpose. There's a video camera. <laughs> 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 I hope you fall on crappy When people keep talking about CTE and the symptomologies about it in terms of anger and 
mood swings and depression and I felt like that was present in me prior to consistently hitting my head. I mean, I'm sure you remember your, what your room looked like prior to me getting the house redone. Punching holes in the wall, seeking out therapy to try to understand your anger and abandonment issues, and I couldn't contain you. I was dropped at Philhaven, which is a local, what would they call that? Mental health facility. Now, why, why did that happen? You had gotten to a point where I just, I, I just did not feel that he reasoned with you, that you were being safe, that I was feeling safe. You were hot and cold, mad, and then uh, uh, reclusive. Like you were like, you know, all or nothing. And I was like, somebody please just tell me he's bipolar. Then I'll understand. Somebody tell me that he needs a pill, you know, uh, because I, I, for the life of me, couldn't seem to, to help or figure it out. Do you remember the time my mom was upset when? Uh, oh, which the, time was that? <laughs> <laughs> the middle school, <laughs> the middle school uh, principal let me out of detention to play a football game. Yes, yes, yes. Of course, in that moment, you don't see anything wrong with it. But if that happens over and over and over, over again, again yeah. to a kid and then to an adult, and then you're released from that protective bubble that allows that. Yeah. I just think that that really messes a lot of guys up if yeah. they don't develop the social sophistication to understand like that doesn't apply to everybody. Yeah. Please, a very, very warm welcome and a homecoming <laughs> for our last inductee tonight, Jared Otter. Well, thanks. Appreciate it. Uh, I, I have a leg up in terms of, you know, just happen to be six foot five and 300 pounds without really trying hard to be that. Um, so, and it was a combination of that and, you know, the men that are sitting at that table, you know, because I wasn't really easy to deal with, you know, and, and, and more importantly, it's the, my mother and my grandmother that are also here in the room as well. I'm a mixed race, and so sometimes with my, my, my white family, I, you know, I felt like a, a black or brown or tan or yellow spot, but then with my, my, my black family, I, I kind of felt like a white spot as well. So I always felt like I, I stuck out, but sports is where I felt like I was really integrated, right? Sports is where I felt like, you know, you know me sticking out with my size was actually, uh, you know, something that further entrenched me into the, an identity of an athlete. I really feel that I was able to develop a sense of individuality earlier than a lot of people because I'm always feeling like other, right? So answering the question, well, are you black, are you white? Help me answer the question. It's like, oh, well, when people would assume things from me, it's like, oh, well, you're a football player, so you you do this and you do that. Yeah. And I'd be like, wait, hold on a second. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And I think, that, I think that helped me in terms of wanting to develop my own narrative of who and what I am. Yeah, well, you know how proud I am. I was always proud of you, even through your temper tantrums. Well, I appreciate that. <laughs> I'm trying to figure out what's my new narrative. It wasn't very attractive for me to go back to the game in the same way and continue the character that I've already been. I wanted to change my mind. I wanted to become somebody else. And what I kept seeing more than often the knot was CTE, CTE, CTE in all my searches. So that's what led me to, to start all this questioning.